So I moved to New York just about 11 years ago. I wouldn't even say it out loud. Like friends and family would ask me, Eric, why'd you move to New York? And I didn't even have the courage to tell people, let alone myself, the true reason why I moved to the city. Look at that moon right now. It's almost a full moon. It's uh, just about 6.35. It's gonna be a really long day. I'm working an internship shift at the actor's studio tonight from six till midnight. And then right now I'm going to my day job, which is from seven till two. You know, this vlog then, is a bit different than most vlogs and this story needs a bit of context. So I didn't move to New York City to start this YouTube channel. I didn't move to New York to become a real estate agent and walk through luxury apartments. Although it's only hindsight that I can say that this YouTube channel was my saving grace. This channel afforded me two things. Number one is time. And number two, resources. I think the biggest thing with anything in life is just being consistent. Anything, uploading videos to YouTube, working out, can't get my boot off. Have you ever tried to take your shoe off with the other foot? It's very tough to do. There we go. And the theme of today's vlog, today's video, whatever you want to call it, is patience and tenacity. Delayed gratification. Playing the long game. And if you have been watching this channel since its inception in 2014, you know that my first two to three years living in this city, like most everyone else who moves here, I was very much a starving artist who was too afraid to admit that he even was an artist. Which is like, if you're gonna do something, you gotta own it. And I didn't even own what I was doing here, which now sounds absurd because I've grown up as a, a person. I wanna add to that, I was a very well-documented struggling artist. Like the days of living in an actual shoebox apartment with cockroaches and mice and a deadbeat landlord who wouldn't turn on the heat. The days where I was always one emergency or one slip up from being totally financially crippled. Therefore saving money wherever I could, like working out on the streets for free, living off hard boiled eggs. Did that for a long time. Contrary to what a lot of people who just find this channel think, seeing me in these apartments and these nice mansions, like my parents are gonna be working until they're in their late 60s. Wow. Unless I can, you know, hustle and, and hopefully retire them. Uh, but that's, that's me, that's where I come from. I'm from a very small, middle-class town in southern New Jersey and you know. And in 2014, when I did move to New York, I didn't have the luxury of time or resources to pursue my dreams. And the truth of the matter is that what we want in life, it doesn't happen on the timeline we expect. It happens on the timeline that we need. It's often said that we greatly overestimate what we can do in one year and significantly underestimate what we can achieve in a decade. And in less than four days, I am making my New York City theatrical stage debut off Broadway and it only took a decade to get here. So let's flash back, it's 2021, and the only way to describe um, just where I was in life was I, I was spiritually bankrupt. I was very unhappy with the person I was becoming, the man I was becoming. I had just got my real estate license, which, you know, I just kind of ran with the real estate thing. I was a, a first mover in the space online, and I, I ran with it, and it was right at the end of 2020 where I'm like, whoa, I am not happy with this. I'm not happy with this guy I'm becoming. And I had a reset, a major, major reset where I really looked deep inside myself and, and kind of decided who, who is it that I want to be? Who, who do I want to be? What kind of guy do I want to be? What do I want to live by? And that was the North Star. And deep down in the pit of my gut, I still had that fire, that fire to want to get on stage and to do this work. And I had the time and I had the resources, so I seriously auditioned for conservatory programs and I found a 
this guy's a genius. The best teacher I've ever had, he's become a mentor. His name's Terry Knickerbocker, who taught me for two years straight, basically all the tools, everything. This guy, he, he works with Sam Rockwell. He works with a lot of really good theater actors. While filming all those mansion tours behind the scenes, Monday through Friday, I was in school and on weekends rehearsing, uh, just doing the thing for two years straight. So I finish up my conservatory in May of last year, right as the union goes on strike, SAG after one on strike. So I'm like, okay, I spent two years studying. Now they're all on strike, great. What, what horrible timing on my part. So I went back into YouTube, what I know how to do. And I, I kept doing home tours. And uh, this past October, I got a email from Dakota saying that he wanted me to audition for this part in a new script that he wrote called Flight Risk. So I went in for a cold read, and uh, here we are now, three months later, driving to rehearsal on a rainy. We're now just pulling up to the theater. The show is at the Gene Frankel in NoHo, and now the Gene Frankel is a staple of the off-off-Broadway scene. It's essentially the birth of off-off-Broadway. It's that quintessential New York City black box theater experience where you are intimate with the performers. There's no actual stage. So the first three rows of the audience are technically on the stage. I'll be totally honest, preparation for this play has been all-consuming in the best way possible, but therefore it's been very hard to uh, find the time and energy to create content around this. So I'm gonna head into the theater, do my warm up. We have rehearsal. After rehearsal, I'm gonna do a little sit down with the playwright Dakota and myself and just get our, our raw reactions to this thing going, you know, up on stage in less than a week. I'm Dakota Sylvie and I'm a playwright. Um, I think I found out you were studying at a conservatory, the Meisner, uh, the Terry Knickerbocker yep, conservatory. Right. And I was like, dang, I didn't, I didn't know he was acting. Like I didn't know he was doing theater and stuff. I emailed you, sent you a script, pro pretty much expecting you not to open it. I, I don't know. I guess I assume you get scripts in all the time. And I, I wish. I mean, <laughs> I've got a few, but yours was the first one where I was like, oh, this is like a real script. I think, I mean, you know this. I had you play kind of a, a villain character, and that was so fun because um, you're so kind and gentle as a person. And to see you get to like express like a totally different character was really fun. And then to see you perform opposite Connor, who's, you know, in this play. Uh, now the roles are reversed. Now I've got you back to being sort of a little bit gentle and kind, but there's some secrets in that character. All right, you're making your New York stage debut. How does that feel? In a week, I think. I was gonna say terrifying, but it's more exciting than terror at this point. Was it terrifying before? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Saying yes to do, do your play was one of the most terrifying things I've ever committed to. Oof, fear can be a bit, but fear can also push you to do great things. What happened uh, to make you less terrified? Oh man, to make me less terrified, definitely working with Connor and Grace. Yeah. And knowing you and having our rapport, Dougie, our director is so kind and so gentle. Um, and then just the preparation, honestly. I said that this morning, I was, I was talking to Geraldine and I was like, wow, I, I'm glad I prepared because I'd be really nervous if I didn't. The, the focus, I, I think that's the biggest thing was the focus required to do a play is so immense. Uh, to have that long of a focus, because think about it, nowadays we're on our phones and our focus is like a second. Should I describe Cooper first? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm playing a character named Cooper. He's an ex-Navy rescue pilot living in Alaska, operating a bush plane, Bertha. He flies hunters on expeditions. Cooper attracted me because he was a guy that had big dreams that I think never had those dreams come true. And at the core, that's, that's a big part of him, and that's something where like I... I can relate to that especially. Like this right here, being in the theater, this is my dream. And to drop into that, like that's a tether to like, okay, this is a real person. So that, that feels good. What else about Cooper? Oh yeah, the, the, the physicality. So yeah, Cooper is, Cooper, should we say what happens? Yeah, generally speaking, like. Yeah, Cooper has a bad injury. He's freezing, he's hungry. So there's a lot of sensory work. And all I can say is thank God I took two years to train. I could have not even, attempted a whack at this if I didn't spend two years of my life, you know, learning a technique to do this. 
Yeah, after seeing you do it, I was like, oh man, I really put him through the ringer on this one. It's uh, still dropping in though. It's, it's gonna, I think I can get a little more out to make it, you know, more. It's surreal being in this space because I know in less than a week, I will be on that stage nearly dying, confessing love to a character, you know, all, all this. And that's exciting. I think people are gonna get really fatigued from the internet and phones and short form. And what is more compelling than coming in and watching live people tell a real story? Like, I, I really think that this generation is going to go back into the theater because they have such freaking burnout from the digital stuff. Yeah. I hope so. Do you think um, all these presentational things, do you think that translates to acting, to stage presence? <sighs> it's interesting because I don't think it... it, it it, it, yes and no. Like the YouTube is definitely, I'm playing a character. Like when I'm that guy walking through the apartments, I am, I'm not me as Eric that, that like my girlfriend would see or you would see or anyone else who's a friend. So I, I do think some of those skills do transfer definitely, but this is a chance to see the, the deeper stuff. Like I, I open in this play and I'm screaming fuck you at Connor. <laughs> like that's a, that's a meal for me to be able to do that on, on stage. I think folks will be really surprised to see, <laughs> to see some of the things that will come out of your mouth. Yeah, it's, and it's great writing. It's, it's come from great writing and great directing and other actors who are there and listening. It's, I, listen, I, I, am, I am more excited and proud to do this play than honestly anything I've ever done in New York. And that's the truth. That's so sweet. That's like, hard there's, there's very few YouTube videos where it's like, yeah, I'm proud of that. Or this. This has been in the works since I moved here. Yeah. You know? I think as I sat writing it, I thought for a sec, like, that guy in the suit is going to start saying, like, fuck knuckle and things like that. Well, it's funny because that's what you know me as. That's what you used to know me as, is the guy in the suit walking around these apartments. And that's, yeah. that's a part of me, but like a little, little part. It's very full circle to be doing a production with members of the actor's studio studying to get their MFAs via Pace. And uh, yeah, I would love if you came out and saw this play because I'm insanely proud of it. And everyone who's working on this is as well. So tickets down below in the description. Uh, we are doing, uh, what, how many shows, eight? Seven. Seven shows and tickets are going fast. So if you haven't, buy tickets, come check it out. Make a, make a whole thing of it. Go get some dinner afterwards, see the show. I'll think of an ending. Mm -hmm.